Um, so yeah, basically then I went off to, to the Himalayas, spent three months out there, um, learning about staying alive and dealing with difficult environments. And I think that probably saved my sanity because I, mm. on a daily basis, was focused on staying alive as opposed to focused on my money problems and the fact that I've just lost my business and being depressed about all the things that have gone wrong in my life, the only thing I had time to think about is how am I going to survive to get to camp this evening and uh, you know when's the next time I'm going to be able to use a toilet or have a shower and those kind of things. So I spent a few months out there, um, I didn't go right to the top of the rest of the team, I got to camp two which is still sort of the cruising altitude of a 767 um, so it's pretty high um, and I think that because I'd had an opportunity just to think about things other than what was bothering me, it gave me an opportunity to put my life into perspective mm. and realise what's really important to me and think about what I really wanted to do. And there was a moment of, a moment of inspiration that I, um, we ended up spending four or five days in a Buddhist monastery um, with some Tibetan monks that lived up in the mountains. The harshest environment you've ever come across, they lived on a slope that looked like that, covered in rocks and had this beautiful monastery. And when we got there, it was late afternoon and you know I've got this image of monks sitting there chanting and praying and meditating. That's not what they were doing when we turned up. They had a ragged old leather football and on a slope covered in rocks looking like this, they were having a kickabout. One of them had a David, uh, David Beckham number seven Manchester United top on. I was like, this is not my image of Buddhist monks. So anyway, I, I, I got quite friendly with them because you know, I, I wouldn't class myself as a religious person. At that time, I wasn't particularly spiritual either because mm. everything that just happened, I kind of you know, felt like I was on my own and there was mm. nobody out there. But looking at these guys, it wasn't so much their religion, it was the fact that they had belief that you know they were given everything they needed and they had the means and the ability to get whatever they wanted out of their lives. And I learned a lot from that experience and I thought, well, hold on a minute, these guys are in the, the physically um, in the harshest, most stressful environment I've ever come across and they're the happiest people you've ever met. And we live in, you know, we've got all these luxuries and you know, all the, 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 the wonderful qualities of life, yet most of the time we're quite miserable and stressed. And then whilst we were in the monastery, we actually came across some Japanese um, climbers um, and they, used to, they were telling us stories about, you know, in their company they had massage therapists that used to come around and yoga in the morning and tai chi and all these kind of things. And I thought that was wonderful. But at this time, that's not really, you know, in sort of 2001, 2002, that's not the kind of thing people did in companies in the UK. So I came back and I thought, all right, what am I good at? I'm good at helping people to get the best out of themselves. You know, I, I used to, to be able to get the best out of my staff and they, 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 they responded well to all my strategies. But that's one of the reasons we were so successful. I love helping people. And also, I hated the fact that I suffered a huge amount of stress and I had no way of getting support. So as soon as I came back, the first thing I did was I'm going to set up a support organisation for people that suffer from stress so they have somewhere to go, they can get some advice, they can get signposted on to someone that can give them some additional support. So we set up the Stress Management Society. Um, within the first week of, of opening the website, we must have had something like 100,000 hits. Um, so we kind of knew that there was an issue that hadn't been tapped because people mm. were going to Google and they were finding us. Yeah. So within six months, we became the most utilised resource in the UK for stress management advice. Um, but then we realised we, we actually do need to make some money. Offering people support advice is great, but our phone started ringing and people wanted to talk to us and we didn't have any money mm. um, coming in. So you know, I needed to make some money quick. Um, because there was a little bit of that business link money left over, which is our little secret, and anyone that's watching this video as well. Um, so that kind of supported me for a couple of months to keep going. Um, but then I needed to make money, so then we were having companies come into this website, as well as people, uh, as well as individuals. So then we started uh, offering sort of workshops, and I got together with groups of people um, that, that used to offer sort of stress management support training and services. And we started offering training to companies and charging people to come to training workshops. Um, and then. Um, Thames Valley University um, came in with a funded project where we were able to offer free training through on their campus as part of their, their curriculum and then we set up a, a shop to sell some of the products we developed um, to people and that sort of grew exponentially and before you knew it that we had 2,000 products um, and then we set up a, a separate consultancy business and it kind of just grew from there so mm. you know this, uh, we've got this umbrella organization which is the stress management society and, it, and then we've got sort of commercial businesses that have been built around that uh, but the, the theme is common throughout all of them and it's all about well-being it's uh, helping people to understand how they can have a better quality of life how they can manage stress and, and how they can get the results that they want and, and, and the energy levels that they desire um, and I guess the lesson I've learned is when the journey started I thought you know, when I was in my first business, I thought, this is it, you know, I'm really successful, making loads of money. But what I've realised is that, that was part of the journey, but that wasn't the destination. That was just, you know, to help me develop my skills, to learn some things. Um, I did that purely for the money. 
I didn't do recruitment because I was passionate about recruitment. I did recruitment because I was passionate about the money that it made for me. Now, I, what I do, I could do it for free. Um, I do what I do. I see uh, how people benefit from uh, the services and products that we provide. I see people coming back to us and saying how wonderful it is to interact with us. And that basically fulfills me at a completely different level, uh, yeah. at a level that money could never fulfill me. Um, because, you know, certainly money can make you feel good, but it cannot leave you feeling fulfilled. And it's only when you find what it is that you're supposed to do. You know, we are all given innate talents, and it's when we're able to apply them on the way that it's easy. You know, when I, when I do what I do, it's easy. Mm. There's no challenges in the way because it's like it's like a path opens up in front of me and it all is developed so naturally. Mm. Whereas before it was it was hard work. It was a challenge. You know, I had to overcome obstacles. And you know, there's um, that, that old saying like no pain, no gain. You know, when you're training in the gym and those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I've learned that's a flawed philosophy mm. because you know what? When it hurts, when it's painful, maybe that's not what you're supposed to be doing. When you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, it's easy, it's fun, mm -hmm. it's joyful, and you know what? Every day you just look forward to getting out of bed, and that's really where I am right now. You know, I, I, I love what I do, especially at shows like this when yeah. you know you get people come to your stand. It's like we came here last year. And we love talking to you guys because you guys are always so calm and relaxed, and, and you know people coming up that we've never met before. And oh, I've been to your website. I bought stuff. You guys, you guys have got some really great stuff and been to your workshops and those kind of things. And that makes me feel like, you know, that I'm doing the right thing and it just really fills me with joy. And I would encourage anyone out there that if they're waking up every day and going to work and thinking, why am I doing this? If you're asking yourself that question, then maybe there is a better solution for you. And, uh, and, and I would really encourage everyone to find a solution that will help you to feel fulfilled and you get to the end of every day and you're just as happy as you were in the morning before you started your day. And what would you recommend <coughs> to those people who are miserable in their job and haven't got a clue what to do? How would you, what's, what's one thing you would suggest that they do today to actually start discovering what that? I think the key thing is to understand yourself, understand what it is that, that gets your juices flowing, what gets mm -hmm. you excited, what are you passionate about? Because if you're passionate about something, you can, you know, that, that, that's going to be fun and joyful for you regardless of whether you're getting paid for it or not. Think about what you could do, whether there was a paycheck at the end of the month or not. And what you find is that you will easily be able to develop a strategy and an approach to apply that to, 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 to something that can make you money. Like for example, say you enjoy uh, painting pictures. You know, that's something you could do just for fun, even if you didn't, got paid, if you didn't get paid for it. You know, that, that person would make a wonderful artist. And I'm sure if they're that passionate about their art, they could develop strategies to be able to utilize that to, to, to develop a, a, an income. If you, you know, love music, you love singing, again, you know, there's a natural opportunity there. Say you love cooking. You know, you, you find lots of people around here that are selling products that you know, I'm sure they started by making them at home and now they're putting them into bottles and selling them into, into supermarkets. I know people, there's the guy uh, that makes the reggae reggae sauce, uh, Levi Roots. Yeah. But he's now got, you know, essentially a multi-million pound business off a sauce that he used to make for his own barbecue chicken. <laughs> Now, you know, there, there is a perfect example. Yeah. Now, ultimately, these are people that are doing something that they're passionate about. You know, when they were making those sources, when they were doing those things in the first place, they were doing it for them. They were doing it because it made them feel good. St. Olive, this is a business that I'm a partner in. That product was um, my business partner. Her grandmother used to make it and put it on, uh, you know, her parents, um, on her grandchildren. It's just an olive oil um, based product, which, you know, she used to use, in the, it's been used in their family for several generations. So all she's done is she's decided to take that formula, put it into a bottle, and she was giving it out to her friends. And her friends kept coming back and saying, you know, can we have more, can we have more? She thought, hold on a minute, you know, if my friends want it, then maybe there's something in it, and maybe I should put it in a bottle and see if people buy it. And then when we got together and we actually started commercially developing this, before you know it, it was being stocked in Tesco's and, you know, in lots of different outlets, and it, was, yeah. it started with a family recipe which you know they enjoyed and they decided to share it. Yeah. And I'm sure every single one of us, if we look carefully at our lives, if, if you're looking for something, you'll find it. If you look for something, uh, whether it's a product or a service or a recipe or a formula or something that you do well, you know, something that you're good at, and we all have something we're good at. You know, if you're looking for it, you'll find it. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, I'm not good at anything. Well, that's actually complete rubbish. You are, you just haven't found it yet. And if you take the time to understand yourself, understand what you enjoy, what you're good at, you will find a way of being able to make a career out of it and a successful career. And it might not necessarily be one that makes you millions of pounds, but I guarantee you one thing, if you find that thing, it might not make you huge amounts of money, but it will make you happy. And money isn't the answer to everything. Ultimately, if you're fulfilled, you will have a happy life anyway. But you may find a strategy where you can make millions of pounds out of it, but maybe that's not what 
is you know it, it, it is is your uh, path. It, it's really for you to determine. Is it just about money or is it about being? Fulfilled? 